Welcome to Satan is my superhero. In this episode, we search out evil in the highest office of the land of freedom from FDR to his polar opposite, Ronald Reagan. I feel like that's a backhanded attack on me. Think of it more like a trickle-down attack. Kansas evangelist and all-round hater Gerald Burton Winrod accused FDR of being an antichrist in his 1945 book The Antichrist and the Atomic Bomb. Wingnut, sorry I mean Winrod, claimed FDR and Stalin were planning a Jewish-led communist new world order. No one will see it coming. Alleged terrorist group and cult Concerned Christian believe the office of the U.S. president is the seat of the Antichrist. How big is the butt on this Antichrist? In the 1980s, the alleged terrorist group and cult, Concerned Christian, was started by Kim Miller, a marketing man for Big Pharma. And if there's one thing Big Pharma are great at, it's marketing themselves as the good guys. Miller originally formed the group as an anti-cult organization. How can I find people to join my cult? Bully them out of other cults. Miller also claims the name Harry S. Truman is part of prophecy in Revelation. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. See, because the English translation uses the word true, and Truman has true in his name, and Ken Miller's a Fucking moron. Going by Miller's Eclipse. logic, if we lit one of the bushes on fire, we'd hear Yahweh's voice. Get away from me, Kim! Come on, Mr. President. Don't you also want to hear from your God? Author George E. Lowe, who has a couple of books called Stomping the Antichrists about U.S. presidents, defended Truman. Lowe reckoned Truman's responsibility in the deaths of six and a half million Asians only earns him a partial Antichrist credit. Oh, better luck next time. Should have killed some white people too. Quality Assurance Officer Gabriel J. Kohler published the book Unmasking the Beast, the Second Reign of JFK in which he asserts there is clear evidence in scripture that JFK will rise from the dead and signal Armageddon. He quotes Revelation And I saw one of its heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed and all the world wandered after the beast. Don't look at the president's head wound, children. It's rude to stare. Believe it or not, but on the anniversary of JFK's death in 2021, hundreds of QAnon creeps turned up at Dealey Plaza in Dallas, where JFK had been shot, because they decided to pretend they believed he would rise from the dead and become Trump's vice president in 2024. I also like to grab him by the pussy. Would have been better than Vance. Hunter S. Thompson opened the eulogy he wrote for Richard Nixon with a quote from Revelation. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the Great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Welcome this kind of examination because people have got to know whether or not their president is a dirty bird. Well, I am not a bird. (laughs) Thompson then went on to say... Richard Nixon was an evil man, evil in a way that only those who believe in the physical reality of the devil can understand it. It's true. If you take my mask off, you'll find Richard Nixon. In an Oval Office recording, evangelist Billy Graham is heard to tell Richard Nixon... During the latter days, Jews will be divided into the remnants of God's people and the synagogue of Satan. The second group consists of those Jews in league with the devil who have a strange brilliance about them and are behind all your religious deceptions. The synagogue of Satan appears in Revelation and has been used to spank the children of Israel for the last two millennia. I said they were brilliant. It's a compliment. 
We actually dig deeper into this verse in the episode, Book of Revelation, Chapter 3, I Will Come Into Him, Gratuitous back catalog plug. where we uncover its true meaning. Spoiler alert! It's probably not about Jews at all. Ronald Reagan famously consulted with an astrologist, which is not the Christian thing to do. Oh, Ronnie. I blame Hollywood. Conspiracy theorists and other fringe elements have found an awesome amount of connections between Reagan and the number of the beast. There's 80 million theories on the net. He hasn't read one he doesn't believe yet. To start with, Ronald Wilson Reagan. Each of his three names have six letters in them. So for the dummies, that's six, six, six. Don't call people dummies. Math illiteracy is serious. In his very first film, Knut Rockney, All-American. Sounds like a porno to me. Reagan played the Gipper. Totally a porno. The Gipper was a member of Notre Dame's football team's backfield known as... The Four Horsemen. (gasps) We're all gonna die. We're all gonna die. Neth, I want you in the coffin corner while famine runs across the dead zone and punts to war. Who will unleash total offense, allowing conquest and glory to bring the dicker rod to completion. Everyone got that? Have you ever even seen football? To bring the dicker rod to completion. <laughs> it's claimed Knut Rockney, All American, was the 666th film released by Hollywood. That's bullshit. I couldn't find anything to back this up, and how would you even count that? Where did you get that number? What research did you do? I heard a thing that suited my preconceived notions and supports my worldview, so I know it in my heart. It must be true. That is not how truth works. You just don't want the fantastical supernatural world to exist. That's all. Why do you want that world to be true so much? If this world is all there is, it means all... I'm just a dumb loser, and I'll never be anything else, and the girls who were mean to me in high school won't burn for eternity. Okay, Knut Rockne, All-American, was the 666th film released by Hollywood. Thank you! Fine. In 1966, Reagan was running for the California governorship and won his first primary in June. Which, if you think of it in the way many people write that date numerically, it makes 6 slash 6 6. What's that sound? Oh, it's a very long bow being drawn. On election day, November the 4th, 1980, when Reagan attained the presidency for the first time, the winning pick three lottery number in Maryland was... Six, six, six. I have to admit, that's pretty cool. Coincidences do happen. Okay, TTs, I will accept that, but... Four years later, the election was on November the 6th, 1984. Four days after that, on November 10th, the Maryland Pick 3 Lottery drew... Six, six, six. Again. The conspiracy theorists like to lump the New Jersey Pick 3 Lottery in this story, but I researched the records for both draws, and while the Maryland checks out, as mentioned, I couldn't find... Six, six, six. ...in the New Jersey results around those times. <laughs> This Maryland lottery thing is amazing. I know. Just wait until the world hears about it. Well, we need a third one. Everyone knows all things of cosmic consequences happen in threes. So we'll have to make something up. You mean lie? Yeah, but it's okay to tell a lie to help promote a greater truth. It's how all religious people who actually believe that twaddle sleep at night. We're still the good guys, right? Yes, but... The demonstrable facts don't support our righteousness, so we have to deceive everyone. So it's a white lie, which which makes it okay? Yes. Unlike the ones told by the black people. Wait, what? It is also claimed Reagan said $666 was added to new car prices by government regulation. He didn't. He said... Government regulations, right or wrong, have added some $600 to the cost of a car. Close enough. I have to fill my red writing on a green background. GeoCities website is something. GeoCities? That's some deep-cut conspiracy theorist bullshit right there. You have to be Xerox machines and a single landline phone in the whole world to understand that one. It is also claimed Reagan's first budget projected government revenue of... 666 billion dollars. 
I couldn't find Ronnie quoting this anywhere, but in the administration's fiscal year 1983 economic program presented to the 97th Congress, projected government receipts were... $666 billion. Oh, Ronnie, you brazen cad. And according to the budget of the United States government, outstanding federal loans at the end of 1988 were... $666 billion. You can also find a June 2000 report in Clinton's archives showing an expected $455 billion deficit ended up being a $211 billion surplus, a difference of $666 billion. And the 2017 US deficit was $666 billion. Oh, that's just a coincidence. In 1981, Reagan was shot and recovered from the wound. People like to associate this with the line from Revelation we heard earlier about JFK. And I saw one of its heads as it were wounded to death and his deadly wound was healed. But it wasn't a fatal head wound. He was hit under the left armpit. Ow, my armpit. I wish you'd shot me in the head. I don't use that. It is claimed his 1984 re-election campaign cost $66.6 million. The only number I found from a source I trusted to be legit came to around $76 million. That's a butler. Which, while not being satanic, is a reasonable amount to pay for a four-year lease on 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. 76 isn't the same as 66.6. It can be if you have to publish a blog every single week. Reagan himself said this of money in politics. Politics is supposed to be the second oldest profession. I have come to realize it bears a very close resemblance to the first. I don't know about you, but my takeaway from that is Reagan was the world's oldest sex worker. Hey there, handsome. Want to get freaky? I can take my teeth out. It is claimed in 1999 a vote in California to create Reagan license plates passed 66 to 6. That's even more bullshit than the last bullshit thing you said. It didn't. It passed 30 to 4. How disappointing. I had one of those plates on my Malibu Porsche. One of the blogs, too insignificant to name, that I read on this uh, subject ended saying, faced with all of this evidence, it's just not rational to believe Ronald Reagan isn't the Antichrist. Apart from the bit about the evidence, I kind of agree. And that's why Satan is my superhero. Thank you so much for listening. Rate, review, subscribe, all that podcast stuff. But most of all, please give us money. Visit satanismysuperhero.com If you sign up to our Patreon at any circle of hell, you will gain access to the satanic sci-fi audio novel, Chaos Machine. It's Dune meets Planet of the Apes meets Paradise Lost. Here's a little bit of it right now. Lieutenant cries, Let there be light. He ignites his plasma saw and drops from the sky directly onto pilot's position. He cleaves a proto right down the middle from head to groin while landing hard on the stony shore. The halved beast falls to the ground on either side of pilot. Chaos Machine by Judas Falling. Get some. Ah. It was a dark night in the city, the kind that makes you question your choices. But then I stumbled upon something, a sound, deep and haunting, like a secret whispered in a back alley. They called it Dental and Flannum. No, I've heard a lot of noises in this town, but this, this was different. A duo with a name that echoes in the shadows, where the melodies are as thick as a smoke in a CD jazz club. You don't just listen to Dental and Flannum, you experience them. They play like they've seen the vile underbelly of the city. Like they've walked those rain-soaked streets at night, chasing ghosts and dreams. They've got rhythm. They've got grit. They've got the kind of soul that gets under your skin, the kind that doesn't let go. So if you're tired of the same old tunes, it's time you pay Dell and Flannel a visit. 
They'll take you on a journey. No questions asked, no witnesses. Just you and the music. The only crime would be missing out. Go to dental and flannel.bandcamp.